Lane. And uh, we're joined by Sarah Spain from ESPN Radio, Spain and Fitz, 7 o'clock all across the country. Sarah, good to have you on. Uh, and uh, ooh, Cleveland, Ohio, I'll tell you what, we just drove through some snow over the last couple of days. <laughs> Tough times up in Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I don't have any familiarity with Ashtabula. In fact, the, the fact that I was born in Cleveland usually only gets brought up by Cleveland folks who want and, and hope that I have any sort of ties to their teams. And I have to I have to let them down easy every time that my parents moved out before I was old enough. And thankfully, I did not acquire any affiliation to the, the Browns. Or, or the, you know, I, I got to grow up in the Jordan years in Chicago, so I made out pretty well with that move. I was going to say you're more Chicago than you are Cleveland, uh, even though that's yeah. uh, where you were born. And uh, so if that's the case, I, I just wonder what kind of swearing you would have been doing at the TV when Austin Lane was playing for the Chicago Bears. Oh, wow. Uh, it, you know, those, those for that little bit. You know what? It wasn't me. Okay, I'm going to say that much. All right. There's a, there's a lot of blame to go around, so don't swear at <laughs> Me, Sarah. That's right. Jay Cutler days. Yeah, listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. listen, we all know where the blame lies with the Bears, and it's 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 at the top, and it's and it's in the pocket. Usually, <laughs> that's that's usually where the two places we most have our eyes on. <laughs> no doubt, Sarah Spain. Uh, you know, Jason Fitz joins us weekly uh, on Tuesday, so it's really nice I'm to so get. Sorry. I don't know. It's fantastic. We love it. We love it. Um, but it's definitely the better half of the show. It's it's a pleasure to have you on for the first time here on Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. Uh, if I I just asked Austin this in the first segment of our show. I say, if you take away the obviously monumental storyline of Super Bowl 55, which is Brady Mahomes, where else do you go? Like, what are you looking at in this game that grabs your attention? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all looking for that, right? It's been such a weird super week, not just because people aren't down in Tampa doing the usual parties and media day and everything else, but because we just saw the Chiefs last year, and the main focus on the Bucks has been on Brady and Gronk, two guys that we've seen a million times. I'm actually surprised to your point of what you were talking about with Bruce Arians, that there hasn't been more focus on the rest of the Bucks. This is not a perennial Super Bowl team. Who are we Who are we wanting to learn more about and what are we wanting to hear about from that team that has, you know, been wanting this and, and that fan base? I think that's what we're missing out on is, is too much focus on, on Brady, despite me understanding why. Um, and then I think the defensive coordinators in this game. Steve Spagnuolo has a great record against Brady, which is something very few people can say. So what is he planning in terms of, are they going to blitz as much as they did in week 12? That was nearly 50% of the dropbacks. That was the second most he faced in the season. And on the opposite side, we've seen, uh, you know, teams really struggle to try to keep up with the Chiefs, but We've seen some great defensive scheming from from the Bucks defense. So, are they going to you know take advantage of that of that hurting offensive line? So, I think there there should be more focus on two great defensive coordinators and what they're going to try to do to line up against brilliant quarterbacks and offenses on both these teams. Sir, I feel like everyone is on the Chiefs right now in terms of they're going to be here year after year. I mean, they got Patrick Mahomes tied up now in a contract. They have Tyreek Hill tied up, Travis Kelsey. Like, that offense is going to be together for a while. And nobody's really talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers set aside from Tom Brady. Like, do you feel like this Tampa Bay team is kind of a one-year flash in the pan? Or can they have some consistency with a Tom Brady who's on the back nine of his career, obviously, but he's still the GOAT nonetheless? This team was, what, 7-9 and nine last year, and a lot of folks who watched casually would, were surprised when experts would say they're one piece away, right? You don't throw as many touchdowns as picks, and you're, get, you're good. You win a lot of those games that were one-score games that were essentially partly given away by just Jameis's inability to take care of the ball. So you put Tom Brady in there, and you start to realize that that top-five defense from last year is still there and that the weapons – can be better taken advantage of. I haven't, to be honest with you, looked at the contracts of a lot of the top weapons for the Bucks. So as far as long-term window, I'm not sure. But in the immediate time, what we saw from Tom Brady this year, some of those numbers, including numbers on the deep balls, um, certainly tell you that he's got more than tank. Uh, we got to stop doubting and assigning arbitrary d dates and ages at which he's going to be done because he keeps passing them by and making us look silly. So there's no reason to believe that this can't be a couple of years of a run for this Bucks team. Now that, of course, the same goes for the Chiefs. Like we make these proclamations about teams, forgetting that you know an injury or a price tag gets too high and you lose a big piece and it looks different. I, I, I always think of the Rams a couple of years ago making the Super Bowl, and the next year all that needed to happen was essentially an offensive line that couldn't stay healthy for them to be completely irrelevant um so you never know if something like that will happen but yeah i can see a couple of years from this bucks team yeah and the bucks are going to go all in i mean they did it right yeah. i mean they did it with fournette they did it yeah. with antonio brown i mean they did it with grok yep. uh, they proved they're going
going to go all in. Brent Martineau, Austin Lane with Sarah Spain from ESPN Radio. Spain and Fitz, 7 o'clock all across the country uh, on ESPN Radio. I'm going to fa- uh, skip over to the Jags because I'm going to put you in like the Jags situation, and I want to get your outlook from a national perspective, but almost how you would look at this through maybe your team, Chicago. What if they brought Urban Meyer and were about to get Trevor Lawrence? How fired up would you be? Oof. Well, those are two very different things. So I will tell you <laughs> that if I were about to get Trevor Lawrence, I wouldn't be wasting my time with you guys. I would be throwing a party. I would be preparing myself for a, a season of enthusiasm and excitement, the likes of which I've never known as a Chicago Bears fan, except for maybe briefly when they got Jay Cutler and we thought that was awesome, <laughs> which didn't turn out exactly the way we hoped, but still he remains the like record holder for almost every category with the team because – the franchise's history at the quarterback position is putrid. I, I constantly have to bring up the name Sid Luckman, and he played so far before <laughs> I was ever born that I've never witnessed a single snap, okay? Um, so as far as Trevor Lawrence, as a dude, as a football player, as a future, I would be over the moon. Fair. Urban Meyer is a, different, is a different story. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, there is a possibility that he will have great success. He's obviously a good football coach. I am always curious about how – the motivational tactics and the approach and the attitude of a, of a college guy translates to the pros where you have a bunch of grown men who make millions of dollars who can't be treated like children. I think the way that his health has been an issue, whether it is as serious as he claims, which then makes me wonder how you can handle the stress and pressure of this job, or if it's not as serious as he's claimed and he's used it as a crutch in order to defend some of his actions around problematic coaches that he's coached with, players that have gone on to criminal behaviors, um, then that's a problem too, right? This is a guy who claimed that the medicine he was taking made it difficult for him to remember things, and yet we expect him to be top of his game, leading in one of the most coveted 32 jobs in sports. Um, A lot of it can't be reconciled unless you admit that he manipulates things in order to get out of situations in which he's put himself uh most people don't care about that stuff they just want a good coach and maybe that's what you guys are going to get i have trouble with the leaders of teams being people that get a little squirmy around around that stuff and so i don't know uh if that won't matter at all at the professional level the way it did collegiately or if it's going to be another problem especially in terms of the tenure of the contract with the length of time that he can physically and mentally be invested in the team how you feeling brent uh that's i think it's fair i I do i think it's fair i think it's i I said this yesterday about urban meyer we just finished this trip a a little try a little fact finding a little more about urban and we knew him from the florida gators days a bit but i do think he's if he's on your team you kind of like it if he's not, you kind of wonder. It's the it's think, ultimate boomer bus play. Yeah. And we're going to find out real quick. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. All right, yeah. Sarah. Now, here, here comes the hard-hitting questions here that I'm so famous <laughs> for on our show. Yeah, just ask Fitz. Um, yeah, just ask Fitz what, what would I bring <laughs> to the table. Go anywhere. Oh, Get it's, nervous. Hey, trust me. We've got three minutes hey, left. Trust me. Well, then keep slowing <laughs> me down if you're at it. Uh, so, Sarah, <laughs> you actually you graduated from Cornell University, correct? And congratulations, yeah. by the way. That, that's Thank a huge you. honor. Have you watched The Office before? The TV show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just all the time. Yeah. Fantastic. Andy Bernard. Yes, Andy Bernard always makes it a habit of saying that he graduated from Cornell. (laughs) It's kind of like the running gag. Do you feel obligated? Is that like a Cornell thing where you have to be obligated to say that you graduated from that university, or is it just kind of a thing on the office? Like, is this a real thing I should know about, or is it more of just the office? Well, so it's funny you mentioned that because I was on an earlier affiliate hit and Fitz had gone on right before me and they asked for my worst takes. And he said, you know, I think that Wrigley is great and he doesn't, which is his bad take. He thinks Chris Farley is overrated. Another terrible take oh, from him. And he don't said, tell oh, me, and he don't said, tell me that. Well, don't Fitz tell isn't me. Isn't coming. Yeah. Can, are you available on yeah. Tuesday at four every week now? Because <laughs> Fitz isn't coming on anymore. You think you know yeah, somebody. Yeah. He oh, should be, no. he should be banished for those takes, but, he also said I talk about Cornell too much. And I think it's fresh on his mind because last night we had uh, Kavika Mitchell, who was teammates with my buddy Kevin Booth from Cornell. And when someone from Cornell goes and wins two Super Bowl rings, I'm going to mention it. That's awesome, right? Like, yeah. we can't give scholarships in the Ivy League. We don't have that many NFL players to go on to great things. So if my buddy, my good friend, is teammates with you and we're talking about the team that won, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, so I think he was sensitive to that. Uh, no, I do think that I do think that Ivy League people certainly do probably insert the name of their school more so than those who are like back in college. I and I'd say back at Cornell, right? Yeah. But in my defense, as a woman in sports, 
I am almost always presumed to be a moron bimbo who just wants to sleep with the players. So I try my best to insert that I was a Division One athlete at an Ivy League school who worked my ass off to get here. And so I might put it in a little bit more than someone else would, solely based on the idea that I know the disrespect I'm going to get before I even say anything. I like it. I like I it. it. And listen, because someone from you know, who plays college on Twitter, football. and you'll see that, too. Exactly. I like that and about her. Someone that played college football, obviously, and people think I'm only here because I played football. I mean, let's be honest. I pub- I graduated from a public Ivy League, Murray State University. <laughs> that that <laughs> was the go. slogan. That was the slogan back in the day. Brent, don't laugh. So I can relate to that a little bit. All right. Yeah, and I think you're only there because you're in the MMA, right? Not the, not the NFL. No, no, it's the, it's the MMA because I, I kind of <laughs> Intimidated the right people, and it's all good now. Would you say no to this guy? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Never. Never. (laughs) All right. My last question, or my last statement, I guess, to you uh, here, Sarah, and we appreciate you joining us. So, when I think of method actors, some of the greats, I think of Marlon Brando, Hilary Swank, but your portrayal of Marla Rose on um, um, my rose on around the horn i mean it should be celebrated um there should be a workshop for it how did that come about number one and number two like your timing was impeccable like have you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy or something like that because i feel like you could kind of pull it off well you would be remiss not to mention my portrayal of moira rose and it. my work on sunrise day um it was really hard that one because I've d- I love doing that Halloween episode. I've 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 done all sorts of uh, all sorts of different characters. My dream job still is to be on Saturday Night Live, yeah. and I actually originally moved out to LA after college to try to do comedy. Um, I did the whole Second Civi- City Conservatory. I've always wanted to try stand up. So like that's my little moment where I get to scratch the itch of the career I originally wanted, and thankfully Around the Horn lets me do it. Uh, but I have to say I started trying Moira Rose, and I was like, oh no. I am going to embarrass myself. This is impossible. It's not even a real accent. And then by the end, I was like, I crushed this. Bow <laughs> down before me. Like, it turned out really well. Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, my, my friends were texting me about it. It was, it was, it was great. Good stuff. Sarah yeah. Spain, we got to let you run, although I'd love to ask you about a myriad of other things. It's National Girls and Women's in Sports Day, and I'm sure there's so many that look up to you. Do a fantastic job. We'll love having you on. Come Thank on again you. soon. Yeah, like let me know when you want me to slide in instead of fits. I'll be happy to take over and improve the show. No doubt. Let's go we'll to the certainly bullpen, do it. Friend. Thanks. Let's bring it in. Sarah Spain. Uh, ch- check it out tonight, Sarah Spain and uh, J- Jason Fitz on ESPN Radio all across the country, 7 o'clock uh, for sure. That's Sarah Spain. Thanks.